Welcome to the 30th anniversary of Jazz at LACMA. We are proud to be back at the museum to present piano player and composer Atmaro Ruiz.
My name is Mitch Glickman, Director of Music Programs for the Los Angeles County Museum of Art. We would love to have you at the audience, but we're not quite there yet, so no audiences yet, but we are able to put together some of the finest musicians in the world, so we keep this great jazz concert series going. Jazz Alakma concerts are made possible in part by the City of Los Angeles Department of Cultural Affairs. Our broadcasts are supported by the Office of County Supervisor Sheila Kuehl. And our broadcasts are made possible in part by our friends on the radio, KJAZZ 88.1, where every Sunday night at 7 p.m. you can hear the Jazz at LACMA broadcast on KJAZZ 88.1 FM. Tonight, we present award-winning piano player and composer Admaro Ruiz. The Venezuelan-born performer came to the LA area in the late 1980s to start work with such jazz greats as Alex Acuna, Justo Mario, and Abraham Laborio. He's been a busy collaborator working with Diane Reeves as her music director for many years, along with collaborations with Katina De Luna, Herb Alpert, and Arturo Sandoval. Here is the Atmaro Ruiz Quartet. Thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Um, it's a great pleasure being back uh, here at the, at the Museum Jazz Series, LACMA. And uh, it's always a pleasure to share these moments with some of my favorite musicians in the whole world. And uh, I would like to welcome to the stage, you know, Mr. Cecina Ahmed, Turkmenoglu on bass, Mr. Jimmy Brownlee on drums, and Mr. Larry Coons on guitar. And uh, I take this opportunity to also thank Mitch Glickman for always extending the invitation for us to make noise uh, with, in this sacred place. So it's always a, a great pleasure. And uh, congratulations on the new piano. Hey. So we started with a couple of um, um, very old standards. Uh, the first one was Indian Summer, and uh, this last, uh, the last one we, we played is uh, entitled uh, Whispering, which is a, a very old tune, but it was the seed for many other counterfact pieces in, in jazz uh, literature. Now we would like to... Uh, continue with uh, an original composition by Larry, one of my favorite compositions, the, one of those that I wish I could say I wrote. This is a beautiful song entitled Candle. <laughs>
That was uh, an original composition of mine uh, that I dedicated to my daughter, Maya. And uh, it's entitled, And Then She Smiles. And I uh, would love to um, end our set. Again, thank you, thanking all of you for your kind uh, invitation to be part of this series especially Mitch uh, Glickman. And I would like to thank my friends here in the quartet, Cecina Ahmed Tukmenoglu, Jimmy Branley, and Larry Coons for their amazing musicianship and uh, for being ready to play after not playing at all. <laughs> so, <laughs> I really value that. Thank you guys for this. And I would love to conclude with uh, this original composition by Larry, another one of my favorites. And uh, it's entitled Why Belesque?
So here we are for our 30th anniversary of jazz at LACMA. I'm Mitch Glickman, here with the wonderful composer and piano player, Admaro Ruiz. So Admaro, during your set, you had mentioned something to the band about being ready to play. Does it feel like you've been in hibernation for so long? Uh, it, is, it is an interesting time because um, I guess during, during all our, our growth as musicians and, and mm -hmm. as performers, you're always thinking about the eventual time in which you might not play for a long period of time. And then what would you do, you know? What, yeah. what would you do to, to maintain your, your chops? To, uh, but nobody thought about a year and a half. And you brought something <laughs> up, because it's one thing to just practice and practice and practice. Yeah, yeah. But that means absolutely nothing, because you have no context. Yeah, context. And uh, for me, uh, the first thing that goes, r regardless if whatever, whatever you practice in, in terms of like complexity or, or um, or death, harmonic death, or whatever, you know. Uh, the first thing that goes, at least in my case, is the ability to, to um, integrate with other people's time. Sure. When you play with a, with a, with a play along, you're, all, you're adapting to that. But you're not receiving the feedback of your own time. Yeah, it's one way. So, so yeah, it is it's pretty interesting, you know, how I'm still trying to to, to figure out what was going to be, what is the best way, you know, to, to, to do it, you know? And uh, I guess for the moment, I've been just keeping the loop <laughs> <laughs> in the right joints. <laughs> well, you sound beautiful, but it's interesting because in a way you are in solitary confinement and now all of a sudden you get to converse with other people. Yeah. And you haven't been able to do that for 12, 15 months, whatever it's been. The coolest thing is to find out what new things people have to say. That's good too, yeah. <laughs> it's been a trip because yeah. even when we played together for so long, I mean, with these guys, that have been, we've been like, you know, uh, but since like, oh, that's what you've been doing this yeah. year and a half. That's what you want to tell us about, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. That's great. So just kind of jumping back a little bit, your roots are in Venezuela, then you came to LA. Do you remember those early gigs when you got to LA? Of course, have to forget. <laughs> uh, I, I, I always tell the story of the very unusual story of, of me in LA, which is that um, I connected with, Era, with uh, Alex Acuna within hours of touching in the wow. <laughs> Within hours. And I, we didn't know each other. It was just uh, one of those things about being in the right, the right, right place, yeah. right time. Uh, so I got to play with him in a, in a recital of a friend of mine. He was playing drums, and they were playing one of my tunes. And I was in the audience, and oh, then nice. they invited me to play, and that was it, boom. You know, uh, that was an instant connection, and a connection that has lasted for 32 years. Uh, but that was just that gig. But I mean, the early gigs, I mean, I paid a lot of dues. And I, you know, that involved a lot of really crazy, crazy stuff <laughs> that I, someday I'm gonna write in a book. Good. <laughs> about. Well, listen. One of your trademarks is you're so beautifully eclectic. So jazz, Latin, pop, rock. You're really so diverse. Do those labels mean anything to you? Ah, uh, uh, well. After, after, after the years, you might, you might want to believe that all those boundaries can be crossed and, uh, and blurred and without any consequences. And the truth is that in my, in my experience, you know, I tend to gravitate to, with a circle of people that understand that, that mm -hmm. this, this, there are no boundaries. However, we live in a world in which the tendency, the trend is to put more boundaries and more labels to everything. So that can, that can be a little awkward, you know, when you don't know how to, how to market yourself. Like we're in the era of self-marketing. Yeah. And you have to constantly tell people what you do. It's like, well, uh, let me see. Uh, this week, so I yeah, do that. Yeah. And a lot of the groups that you work with are incredibly diverse as well. Uh, recently, you know, Simon Phillips, 
is very different from you know your trio. Mm. Can you talk about some of the recent groups that you've been a part of? Uh, well, yeah. Um, growing up uh, in Venezuela, we don't have we didn't have the luxury of specialization as we have here in the United States. Here, you can make a career playing Dixieland. <laughs> Uh, there you had to do, I had to do Dixieland everything. too. Yeah. <laughs> I did Bolero and Dixieland and, and everything in between and rock and roll. So, but I grew up with a, I, I would say an honest appreciation for everything, you know? And uh, what that generated is this, uh, this feeling of needing, I always need to be moving stylistically, you know, I get bored easily, yeah. even even within my own context of my own acoustic music. Sometimes I need like uh, I need to escape from that and do something different, you know, so like uh, situations like Simon Phillips are great because it's not only challenging music. Oh, yeah. Perhaps one of the hardest music I've ever had to, had to learn, but also it, it, it taps into that electronic side of things that I also do like to do. Uh, and you know, like everybody else, I had my humble beginnings in progressive rock too. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I really believe that you have to embrace everything you, you are, everything inside of your luggage. Don't be ashamed of your dirty <laughs> clothes, you know? So that's, that's what it's about. So as we start emerging from this pandemic, are there projects on the road for you? Are there any touring? Uh, well, I'm starting to do s uh, my first actual um, tour. Well, this is a small trip. Mm -hmm. is with Lee Rittenauer oh, coming beautiful. up right right up in a few weeks. Uh, it's um, outside of the United States. Um, slowly, things have started to, to shape, back, to come back to shape. Um, but um, truly now, I mean, I've... I've um, I got uh, a position teaching at UCLA oh, beautiful. and at COC, College of the Canyons. So that I want to honor that that also, you know, that, you know, I don't want to be the, the guy that took the job just when needed right. the money. <laughs> so the students are great. And uh, I think I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, try to have a presence in, you know, in their, in the uh, faculty, you know, life as much as I can, and uh, so th that's going to be. Wor uh, this, I think it's going to work okay because the gigs really are not starting to. It'll be a until while. Probably, yeah. the, uh, my, I think my next rescheduled tour is for summer 2022. Oh wow! Okay. So you know, it's uh, who so knows? it's a long road back. A lo yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. Any other projects coming up you want to share about? Uh, it, uh, well, I am. Uh, almost finished with the uh, arrangement, the arrangement phase of uh, our second record with my wife, with oh, Katina. Nice. Uh, so Lado B will see, will return like James <laughs> Bond. <laughs> beautiful. Uh, beautiful music. Uh, it took us a long time because it's such a project. It's a labor of love, true love. Uh, we want the music to really touch us first, and then so we can do our thing and hopefully touch people. So yeah. that's why, you know, choosing the repertoire has been like a really interesting process. And, um, and I have about uh, probably four CDs worth of original music. Oh, wow. That ranges from uh, acoustic, um, the, my regular acoustic format, trio or quartet to more uh, orchestral stuff Beautiful. and even uh, uh, I have material for a vocal album I wanted to do a, a record with my favorite singers nice. um, just songs that I you know when I met Katina I got this muse all of a sudden <laughs> <laughs> this urge to that's to what love does all that yeah that's great so all this you know I have all kinds of songs so well then we have a lot to look forward to then. Yeah, I, and I look forward to, to documenting them. You know how music stays there, you know, of and course. after a while it's like, it's like okay, uh, I had to document this, otherwise it's going to start yeah. stinking. <laughs> well, listen, thank you for coming out and sharing with us, kicking off our 30th anniversary. Real joy.
Thank you so much. And it's very special for me to be part of this and, and to have such a history with the series too because we, it's been a long, you know, we've been doing this for a long time. So and we've been loving it. I really appreciate it. Well, thank, thank you. you. And thank you for joining us for our virtual jazz at LACMA 30th anniversary concerts. Can't invite you back yet, but check out lacma.org slash music. lacma.org slash music. You get all the latest news on the concert series and what's happening here at the museum. We hope to see you really soon. Until then, take care. <laughs>